there's no hope. There's no faith. There's no meaning. There's nothing but a bunch of depressed people on pills who can't do nothing. Useless. Useless eaters. And the lords of this world know that. A bunch of useless eaters. So they want us dead. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, about a year ago, I heard some words by Professor Victor Davis Hansen about this drive towards quietism, he says, in ancient Greece and how the old conservative class of Athens withdrew from participation in their democratic systems in the hopes that things would just resolve. Of course, things only got worse. A week or so ago, I saw a post you made about just wanting to get some land and disappear for a quiet life. I've shared that sentiment, and I think many of us who lean conservative drive that same, have that same drive as well. But isn't it ultimately an effeminate drive? Interesting. The question goes on. With what has transpired in the United States, a presidential election being stolen by foreign nations with impunity, all the branches of government submitting to the lawlessness of Antifa, BLM, Marxists on the inside who are playing ruthlessly to win. Our side is in la-la land thinking this cancer will do anything but spread. It seems the whole moral spine of our country is broken isn't that drive towards quietism, passivity on our side to blame? The extreme cowardliness uh, the, that American society has displayed over the past year in the above context fills my soul with sickness, but I'm trying to keep a stoic frame, be well. So Juan, yeah, very good question. You want to know, is it better to be involved or is it better to drive towards quietism? And it's interesting. I'm reading a book about this right now. It's called Thou Shalt Not Live by Lies. Uh, I can't remember the name of the author. And I actually even mentioned it because we had a conversation a lot like this uh, when I spoke to J.P. Sears. I was on his podcast uh, just earlier this week. In fact, I'll give you guys the link to the podcast that I did with J.P. Sears. Uh, and it's called Outsmarting. <laughs> he says, out, he titled it Outsmarting the Communist Takeover with Elliot Hulse. <laughs> and so let me get back here so you guys can watch that because it answers a lot of your question here. So JP asked me the same thing. He's like, well, what would you say to somebody or to people who you know are, they, that they need to change their mind? And I referred to the, the video that has become so popular in recent years because it's almost like it was predicted, the things that he talked about, um, by Yuri Benz, Bezmenov. Yuri Benz, Bezmenov was a KGB defector, KGB defector. He was a Russian uh, who understood and worked with the Marxists to subvert the American culture. I, he called it ideological subversion. And he went through and he described the different stages of ideological subversion. Um, and the stage that we are in, which is like one of the final stages of ideological subversion, he called demoralization. During this stage of demoralization, the one we which we find ourselves in right now, facts don't matter to people anymore because they've been so brainwashed that you cannot change their mind. He says that they will not, you could tell them about Nazi or, or Soviet uh, concentration camps, right? Okay. But they will Can not believe that, you that know, they exist. Zane. Zane, I need you to mute. Uh, <laughs> they will not believe you until he says that there's a, a boot crushing your balls, crushing his balls. So the point is that 
you're not going to change anybody's minds. And this war is an ideological war. You got to understand that too. This is not a war of bombs and bullets yet, but it's an ideological war. And you're, like you said, the conservatives have lost this war. And the foot soldiers of the left, you could say, right? You mentioned Antifa, BLM, Marxist, um, are so, they're, they are so subverted. Their, their minds have been so demoralized that there's no changing their minds. You could show them, he says, you could show them 100% proof of what's going on. You can show them 100% proof that like you say, this, this presidential election was stolen. You can show them 100% proof, 100% proof, video footage of what happened and what's going on and try to explain to them. You could even describe the history of what's going on. Here's the history. Here's where we started making wrong turns. Here's the proof. Here's videos. Here are the very words of the people who began this ideological subversion and what their plan was and look. And these people, they won't hear it. It does not matter. Facts don't matter to them. Truth doesn't matter to them. It's a weird, weird thing. I don't understand it. I don't understand how you get that way. I don't understand how you become so brainwashed. And these are not dumb people. I think Reagan once said that it's not that your liberal friends don't know anything. It's that they know so much that isn't so. They're smart people. And I see a lot of them like I went to high school with and elementary school with, and they were like the smart kids. Some of these, some of them, they were smarter than me, way smarter than me. They weren't, and it seems that like, you know, it's the gifted kids, it's the kids that got the good grades that are the most brainwashed, All right? Robert Kiyosaki says that uh, A students work for C students and B students work for the government. So you got A students and B students, basically followers. C students come work for me or go work for the government, right? Mediocres, the mediocres go work for the government, <laughs> right? So it's mostly the C students that are the, that are the rebels. So knowing that you can't change their mind it doesn't mean that you don't speak up, doesn't mean that you don't express yourself, doesn't mean that you, you don't say the truth, but you cannot be attached to the, to the end of trying to change them. You can't change them, like you said, like, like uh, Besmanov says, you, uh, a, a book could be crushing their balls and they're not gonna change their mind. They're not gonna change their mind and you ain't gonna change their mind. Not, e not with great rhetoric, not with convincing speeches, not with with comments on Facebook, not with facts, not with documentaries. It does not matter. They're not interested in truth. They're interested in upholding, living the lie that, you know, we've been fed since we were children. Some of these lies, we've been fed since we were children and they've come, uh, Antonio Gramsci says, you know, he calls it the long march of the institutions. They've come through Disney movies. They've come through our music. They've come through the media. They've come through the news. They come through the government. They come through the churches. They've come from every aspect of our lives. They've infiltrated every aspect of our lives. So it's hard, not, it's hard to get away from that now. So this idea of quietism or moving out into the country, I don't even think it would work. The only reason why I would want to move out in the country is because I have a feeling, not even I have a feeling, there are facts, <laughs> let me put it that way. There are facts that our food supply is threatened. It's threatened right now, highly threatened, the food supply. Um, there's a really good guy, he, he makes videos on YouTube, but, but he doesn't put all of them on YouTube, he puts a lot of them on BitChute named Ice Age Farmer. Check out Ice Age Farmer. He does videos on the, on the, on the food supply shortage that's eminent. And he does, it's not even, it's political. It's definitely political. It's definitely uh, a move for power by the oligarchs, right? The leaders of this world, uh, guys like Klaus Schwab and, uh, and, um, Bill Gates, these, these types. But he also describes 
something that's happening on the planet that's 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 moving us towards this um food crisis food supply crisis i think he calls it a grand solar minimum and during a grand solar minimum it's just a natural cycle of the planet and the sun um I don't understand it totally, but something is happening on the sun that's causing food not to grow the way it should be growing here. So we know we've had crop shortages. We've had crop fires. China is buying up all of the world's crops right now. It's this crazy thing. If you watch his videos, he talks about like all of the like China's buying up all of Americans grains, all of America's food, all of Argentina's food. Like why is China all of a sudden? buying up tons and tons and tons of food because they know <laughs> they know me yeah there you go some of these guys are writing about it. meat packing plants too yeah he, he did this one video about the slaughter of something like 60 million pigs they just slaughtered them and threw them in in the dirt part of it had to do with uh with covid because the, that it's it disrupted the supply chain so the farmers couldn't get rid they they needed to get the food to the packing plants and the packing plants people were getting covid so they had to shut down the packing plant so they like all this food is piling up and they had to throw it away there's a lot of that going on right now so why would i want to go live out on a piece of land well because it's a good idea for human beings to know how to feed themselves it's not about getting away from or not being engaged with the socio-political world. It's about being self-sufficient, being self-reliant. I don't know how to be self-reliant yet. I don't know. I really don't. I grew some sweet potatoes. <laughs> Those are the ugliest sweet potatoes in the freaking world. I figured out what I did wrong, but I'm learning. But I need more space to grow stuff so I can learn. I need space so that I can learn how to raise chickens, husbandry, right? animal husbandry. I would like to learn all that stuff. I can't do it in the suburbs. Why do I want to learn how to do those things? Because there's food supply issues. Bro, all you got to do is consider what would happen if the truck stopped rolling in. There was there was threats of a uh, a, a trucker strike not too long ago. Imagine the panic if truckers just stopped bringing the food into your city. They just decided, you know what? There's too much chaos in those cities. Our truck and uh, there's too much violence, and we're afraid that we're gonna, our trucks are going to get hijacked. We're not driving no more until the these cities, uh, you know, up, you know, st stop defunding the police and whatnot. Imagine, the, imagine the truck drivers, the lowly truck drivers, said, "Fuck that! We ain't driving no trucks no more." Man, you know what will happen? chaos starvation death i don't want to be dependent on that fragile system if i don't have to ice age farmer also talks about this uh i don't know if you guys are aware but there was a huge uh hacking of various government and high uh very important corporate computers i think it was called um Solar winds. There was a big solar winds uh, hack. Uh, you know, I just I'm not an expert in this shit. I'm just telling you what he's talking about. And that these cyber Klaus Schwab talks says that you know one of the next virus we're gonna have to worry about is a cyber pandemic. They're like already pre-programming pre-programming us for these cyber pandemics. You know what happens during a cyber pandemic? They can't. The food supply shortages will be challenged because they can't communicate. Imagine all the communication was, was cut off between the farms and the trucks and the packing plants and the supermarkets. And they've got this like very intricate, fragile system of communication. But somebody hacks in and shuts that shit off. China, right? Don't think China is not like licking their chops at us right now. Don't think that China, don't think we don't have enemies. Let me put it that way. Because not just China, but China's powerful. There's a lot of there are a lot of people that don't that want to see. I'm just talking about America. There are a lot of people want to see chaos around the whole world, but they want it, they're loving this chaos that's happening in America. I don't want to be dependent on that. 
I want to be self-sufficient, just like our ancestors, right? We are way too dependent on services and we can't do anything. We're useless. Majority of us are practically useless, right? What can you do? I know I saw this, uh, I saw this uh, YouTube video. It was a, it was a millennial, it was a millennial at a job interview. It was this girl being interviewed by like this older guy, like for a job. And uh, he asked her like, okay, what can, what can you do? You know, she didn't have any skills, but she said she knew how to use technology. He was like, okay, good. So he started like describing different, so like basic software, like publisher and word and things like that. He was like, can you do this? Can you use that? Can you? And she was like, no, no, no. He was like, what can you do? He says to this girl, obviously it's a joke. And she's like, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube. And he was like, but I'm going to need help doing other things. And she's like, oh, that's not a problem. I'll just ask Siri. The whole point, and it was, of course, it was a mockery. The whole point is people are useless. And I think the, the, the oligarchs, the rulers of this dark world know that. And so they know how fragile the system is and they know how useless people are. And they also have an agenda to depopulate the planet. It's stated. Look into the Georgia Guidestones. Look into Agenda 2030. Look into the deleted videos of Bill Gates talking about global depopulation through vaccines. He did a TED talk on it. I watched it. I watched it numerous times because it went viral. And then all of a sudden, it disappeared. But I bet you can find it if you go on like Brighteon or Gab or, uh, you know, one of these alternative videos, video uh, platforms, maybe BitChute. I guarantee you'll find it. They want to depopulate the planet. They want you dead. I don't want to die if I don't have to die, especially if I can grow in the earth, grow animal husbandry, <laughs> right? I can make my own eggs. I've decided I could live, I could live on eggs and sweet potato, eight eggs and sweet potatoes. If I can grow eggs and sweet potatoes, I'll be all right. I'll live on that, right? Think about the potatoes that, that the people what was it, in, uh, in Ireland, right? And they live on like straight up sweet, they just lived on, on potatoes. They lived on potatoes. You can live on potatoes. You can live on potatoes for a while. It won't be nice, but you can live on potatoes. Also, being out in the country like that would set you away from the chaos that would ensue in densely populated areas. So anyway, my point, Quan, is that it's not about running away. It's about finding su su sustainability, personal sustainability, self-reliance, right? I don't know about this quietism stuff. I mean, I'm always going to have my opinion. I'm always going to say what I want to say and cast my vote in my way. But I see, I don't see any benefit to hanging around when shit is falling down. What am I going to do? I'm going to save it. Like I told you, the demoralization of this population is complete. You ain't going to save it. You ain't going to change anybody's mind. Jesus is what you can offer. You can offer, this is when religion starts making a comeback. Watch me, watch. This is when religion starts making a comeback because people start recognizing the futility of what's going on in the world. They recognize they have no power, you have no power, that this, the rulers of this dark world want you dead, that everything that you thought was important isn't important, that everything's a made up farce. Everything's a farce. You see what happened at the Capitol building this week, yesterday? All that was made up. It was fake. There's so many staged false flag fake events. Nothing's real. Everything in this world is fake. Clint Sa Saunders talks about all they care about is their own currency. And guess what? That currency is about to collapse, right? So let's go there as well. I talked about, you know, food shortage which is a legit thing, science, scientifically proven, grand solar minimum, go look it up. I'm not a fear monger. I'm just trying to be practical. It is not practical to be dependent on food trucks. It's just not practical. It's convenient. It's comfortable.
So I know I'm kind of, this is my first question. So I'm, I'm speaking all over the place. But the currency is gonna collapse. It's that's the plan. That's the plan. That's the uh, objective of central bank systems. That's what they do. We've been on a central bank system for about a hundred years, which is probably about fifty years longer than it usually takes just to destroy it. That's what a central bank system is about. It's about giving the people a sense, of, a false sense of prosperity, getting them addicted to debt, crashing the monetary system, and then taking everything away from everybody. Look at what's happening in California. I, I don't know if you guys heard, but I, I saw a report that Gavin Newsom is buying up all the real estate that people are losing because of COVID. This is what they do. They destroy everything and then they steal it. It's pure greed. And so I say that, I'm just saying that because you got to be realistic. This will, we've been living in a house of cards and somebody just turned on the fan and it's about to blow over. This whole thing's coming crumbling down. Where do you want to be? I'll probably, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be out in the country or not. I might be right here. I might be right here. And so you got to prepare. You got to do the best as you can right where you are. And that's really what it is, dude. Um, like I said before, people start to recognize how futile things are. And that's when they start growing stronger. Will Durant said uh, that religion, re you, there's religion at the beginning of a society because they just, you know, because there's a cyclical as thing as you know strong men weak men created hard times strong men create good times once again but that always he says religion accompanies it to the rise and philosophy accompanies it to its fall that's where we are there's no religion nobody believes in god nobody we're pure we're really an atheistic nation and with that there's no hope there's no faith there's no meaning there's nothing but a bunch of depressed people on pills who can't do nothing, useless, useless eaters. And the lords of this world know that. A bunch of useless eaters. So they want us dead. And, uh, and so that's what this is. And so just to come full circle, answer your question the best way I think I can. Uh, is it an, an effeminate drive? I don't think so. I don't know about the quietism. Maybe that is. But as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing more masculine than being self-reliant. And that's really where I'm at with that. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot Hulse here, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation coaching students, where among many things, we get together about four or five hours a week, where we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. And if you want to join a like-minded group of men that get together every day to grow stronger in every way during this degenerate age, it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me or one of my teammates will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I really hope to see you perhaps at our next live call. Done.